Welcome everyone. Let's have a redo of that. Good evening to everyone joining us on this live event. My name is Sonali Kruger. I'm the marketing manager on the Vitaforce brand and I'm really excited to share this live event with you. Um, it's in conjunction with our partner Sleek Geek and on the call tonight we have all our amazing guests, community members as well as my two co-panel members Tash from Sleek Geek as well as our guest speaker, Heidi, our Senior Education Manager for the Health and Wellness at Ascenders. I have the honor tonight of introducing our guest speaker, Heidi, and I can honestly say that she is just one of those amazing people with the ability to inspire and motivate you through insights, knowledge, just that skill to make you think deeper and ignite that thirst to know more about yourself and your health. Over the last 10 years, she has developed a passion for enriching the lives of our partners, our staff members, as well as our consumers. She loves helping people to understand diseases and how science behind vitamins, minerals, herbs, as well as other natural nutrients can be, um, can be an alternative solution to achieve better health. Tonight, we take time to uncover why your body fights with fire. Is there any positive side to inflammation? When does inflammation become bad and ugly? And how can inflammation worsen any condition? And lastly, what can you two do to help your body turn the fire down? I will now hand over to Heidi and thanks everyone and we hope that you enjoy the session. Please use the Q&A bar at the top for any questions you might have and at the end of the session we'll just open up the room for any questions you might have. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Sanali. Okay, so I have my camera on. Welcome, everybody. I just want you to put a face behind the voice and the information that you're about to get. But I am quite an expressive talker. I do a lot of hand signals and I get so excited. So I'm going to switch my camera off and then at the end, I will switch it back on again when I'm doing the question and answer. So if you have any questions, please just type them up and Sanali will answer or just flag them to me as we go along. So I'm starting with a little bit of a scare tactic. According to statistics from the World Health Organization, chronic inflammation is expected to remain the leading cause of death in developed countries for many years to come. And what a lot of people in the medical and science um, field are coming to agree upon is that inflammation might be at the root of all chronic conditions we know to date. So I want you to, if you've just joined, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to listen to my very soothing voice and I want you to picture your happy place. So for some of you, if your happy place is um, a beach or a favorite hiking spot or if anywhere that you've gone, if you're a nature person, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you are there. If your happy space is working out and if you're in, um, you, 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 you reach your high and you reach your zone um, and you're, you're, you're the happiest when you are working out and pumping muscles and, and hitting that pavement, then I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself there. For some of us, especially me, I'm doing my job at 7 p.m. <laughs> after hours. But if your happy space is your job and you really, really, really love what you do, you get fulfilled, it, it's a passion, it's a calling, then close your eyes and think about that. For some of us, it might be our families. For some of us, it might be in the arms of somebody that we love. And for me and my daughter, it's definitely the couch. The couch and our bed are our happy places. Okay, I hope you've all closed your eyes and I hope, I, can, I hope that you're relaxing and you're calming down and you are probably hoping and wishing that I wish I was there. And while you're in this happy place, you get stung by an insect. So I want you to imagine if you've ever been stung by a bee or a bitten by a red ant or you've been bitten by mosquitoes, I want you to imagine that. And as I was doing this presentation, I discovered something very interesting. Um, I discovered that we can actually, um, there was a guy called Schmidt who developed a, a scale of insect bites just to give us an idea of 
um, how painful um, the experience is. And he's, he's divided into four different levels. So there's level one, that's the lowest pain um, threshold, and level four, that's the highest pain threshold. So if you were to be bitten by a red ant or a very small bee, it's the equivalent of you getting a tiny spark. Um, 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 think of if you've putting the your charger or a plug into the plug point and there's a little spark and that shocks you. Or you're opening, especially in winter time, you're opening the you're touching the door handle, or you hug or touch somebody who maybe um drags their feet along the carpet and as you touch them you get that electric spark so it's it's it, it's it, you can barely feel it it's painful and it's very short and you, you you get over it you you don't think much about it so that's a level one red ants and very small bees are a level one scale level two are honeybees and um the smaller wasp and the equivalent of a level two pain, I want you to imagine maybe stubbing or hitting your toe against the furniture as you are walking. That's very anal. Or think about, well, he equated it to if you were to have a cigarette and if you've ever had a cigarette burn, imagine that pain on your mouth or on your tongue. Very short, very painful, at most Five to ten minutes and you 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 have made peace with the pain. Level three is quite a big jump. And this is normally when you get stung by a wasp. Very intense pain. I want you to think of a pain where you have a paper cut and you decide to pour bleach, vinegar, or lemon juice into that paper cut. Well, I want you to imagine if you've ever stood on um, next to the stove or by the bride stand and you you burn yourself. Um, and the level three pain threshold can differ. It can be it can last very quickly. I mean, it can it can um, last a very a very short period, so five to ten minutes, and then you become okay. Or it can last a little bit longer, up to a few hours, two to four hours. So imagine putting your hand on that hot plate or on that bry stand for two to four hours before the pain starts becoming better. And the worst pain, the level four pain is said to be by a tarantula hawk spider, a warrior wasp, that's what's on the, the image there, or a bullet ant. And these are creatures that are native to um, South America. The duration varies, so it can be quick for two hours, especially if, if you're, you're, you're bitten by the warrior wasp. It feels as though you are trying to grab onto the electric fence for those five minutes without letting go. The bullet ant, on the other hand, the pain is so severe. I want you to imagine that you're stepping on a big piece of glass on the ground and it sinks quite deeply in. And then you walk on coal with that gl gl glass still under your foot. And you're doing this for, for anything from eight hours to 24 hours. That pain is not going anywhere. So if you've just joined, this is not an introduction into uh, Fifty Shades of Grey Masterclass. I'm starting here because I think we can all, that's the one thing we can all relate to. We can all relate to having experienced some sort of physical pain, regardless of our pain threshold, right? So let's go back to our happy place. If I've removed you from a happy place, let's go back. So remember you're, at, you're in your happy place, you get stung by an insect or a bee, in so much pain. What usually happens, there's pain, it becomes red, becomes a little bit warm and it starts swelling. So there are two things happening. There's injury at that puncture site where you've been stung, so the tissue is damaged. And then there's toxin exposure from that sting, and your body is saying, man down, man down, man down, man down. 
and your body says, okay, man down, but man down can't be man down forever. I need a hero. So if you are um, a little bit more mature, you might think of Bunny Tyler. Um, when she's saying, I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. Um, and for some of you, if that song is not um, ringing any bells, I want you to think, think Shrek 2. Um, that's where the song has been remade. And our hero in this instance is our immune system. So our immune system, it's, it's not just one thing. It's biological structures and processes that help us to protect us and keep us healthy, especially from disease. And to function properly, our immune system must be able to be able to tell, tell who's, who's, who's the, the baddie and who's the goodie, the good person, especially in the body's own tissue. Um, that's how we know we have a healthy immune system when it's functioning as it should. Now, our immune system comes in two parts. You get the first line of defense. This is the immune system that all of us are born with. So your skin, we're all born with skin. We're all born with mucous membranes. So anything that has a wet lining, think of inside your nose, inside your mouth, um, inside your gut, that's the mucous membranes. Your stomach acid, that's also part of our immune system. And think of... Okay, that's all I can think of at the moment. Your first line of defense, you are born with it. It doesn't have to go for training and it tends to have a one size fits all approach. Quick response. So I want you to think of that security guard. I want you to think of that ADT patrol in your neighborhood. I want you to think of some levels of, of SAPS. Um, they have a very one size fits all approach. Okay, maybe not SAPS, but it should be one size fits all approach and a quick response. They don't care if they are dealing with the organized mafia that was shooting in Bedford View earlier this week. They don't care if they are dealing with the bus, the cartel bus from the Sinaloa cartel, which is one of the biggest drug cartels in the world. They don't care if they are dealing with somebody who's stealing a loaf of bread. Their response is the same, regardless of who you are and regardless of the dangerous situa situation. So if it means that they, if they feel their strength is tasing you and pepper spraying you, they're going to use that regardless of who you are. If they are comfortable with disarming you with a, a, a baton or firing random shots, then they tend to use that approach um, to get out of st sticky situations or to contain the situations. So that's called our innate immunity. We are born with that. The second part of our immune system is called adaptive immunity. It's a second line of defense. It has a little bit more of a complex process uh, with dealing with invaders or with danger. It has a customized approach. Um, and we, we need to develop this type of immunity as we are, are, are growing. So to make an analogy, I want you to think of our special forces of South Africa. And I want you to also think of the Hawks. The Hawks are part of the South African uh, police service, but they tend to be elite and independent of the SAPS. And they spend quite a lot of resources and quite a lot of time researching um, cash heists. They, they, they investigate human trafficking, drug trafficking, corruption, commercial and corporate crimes, organized crimes, all the complex crimes. We're relying on the Hawks to, to figure that out. So the first time they are encountering that invader or that danger, they actually have to take a step back because we need to study, we need to research, and we need to develop a strategy in the, in, in the background while the innate immunity is doing its fight. And once we figure out who we're dealing with and how we need to neutralize them, then we strike. It might take us slow to respond, but when we strike, it tends to be efficient. And the next time we deal with that specific person, our response is a lot quicker because we already have all the background intel. So inflammation is one of your body's ways to fight. 
inflammation is an immune response. And I want you to understand this. Inflammation is your body's first line of defense. Anytime there is something harmful, anytime you're getting sick, anytime you've injured yourself, inflammation is the quickest and fastest way for your body to fight. Um, it, and it, it's a one size fits all approach, but it's quick. So the inflammation process, let's go back to we're at our ha happy place. We got stung by a bee. And then what tends to happen? Well, because the bee has punctured um, the skin, the bee sting has punctured the skin, it sets our nerves to actually send a little SMS or maybe even do a, a call, a quick WhatsApp call, because our brains and our nerves have, they are, yeah, our, our nerves have the brain on speed dial. To say, hey, brain, thrilling, thrilling. Um, sure. I've just experienced pain. And brain goes, oh, no. Where's the pain? Let's just locate the pain. And then the nerves are probably going to say, um, it's not just the pain. We are detecting that there might be something that doesn't belong in the body. Remember that bee sting might leave a little bit of toxin or ven venom. That's the stranger that does not belong in the body. So ring the alarm, ring the alarm, ring the alarm. And once the alarm starts ringing, our targets, are the, 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 the area of site where either the infection or the injury is happening, they need to ring the alarm, ring the alarm, and they need to signal to cells that have a special protein called cytokines. Cytokines, when they get released, they signal the immune system to do its job. So we are calling back up. We're calling back up. And you find cytokines all over your body and different types of cells contain cytokines. So that's the process. That's what happens when you have inflammation. There needs to be something that's triggering or, or has an effect or is a site. The cells that are where the, 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 the action is happening need to send a quick SMS to cells that have contained cytokines and the cytokines need to start getting released to say we need to act and we need to act quickly and fast. We want to contain it. So what usually happens when um, the cytokines are being released um, at the area where there's injury or there's uh, an infection or a virus or a bacteria, well, your body starts increasing the blood flow and the blood vessels start dilating. Because why we, <laughs> I want you to think of the blue, blue lights brigade. Every morning at half past six, when I travel up that M1 bridge, there is always wee, 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 wee. And everybody needs to try find, make way, make, make, make way, make way. So when the blood vessels are dilating, it means that we want to create more space so that the, the, immune cells can get to the affected area quickly. And then the blood vessels also start becoming porous and it's almost like a floodgate that gets released and that's what's causing. So all the fluid starts filtering into the tissue where the action is happening. Um, and that's causing that swelling effect. And some of that swelling might actually be pushing on some other nerves and cause more pain. Those cytokines also start releasing um, or having a, a, we need a little bit of redness. Oh, no, no, it's the circulation. If we're improving circulation and blood flow to that area, then it tends to make, um, have that red effect because we have more blood flow there. Then there's a little bit of tenderness and then we also start experiencing pain. So let's go through the process again. So redness is caused by the blood vessel dilation. We want the blood vessels to dilate so that we can get the immune system cells to the affected area faster. And um, the heat is caused by the increased blood flow to the area. And it can also start triggering a fever. So if you ever wonder why do I have a fever, it's because 
your body's saying we need immune system response somewhere. It's a sign that there might be something wrong. Um, so the fever is caused by the chemical components released by the immune system. Uh, and it's almost like we want to light matches. We want to kill off this pathogen. We want to um, we want to throw a little match in that direction so that we can kill it off with temperature and then um, hopefully it quickly dies off. Um, and then um, we'll bring the temperature down if if we think we've done a good job of containing um, that infection or that um, um, stranger. The swelling, we're filtering more liquids and fluids to the affected area due to the blood flow. Um, and then the blood vessels are expanding and becoming more porous. And some of that swelling effect can start pressing on nerves and aggravates the pain. Um, so the swelling can compress your nerve endings, um, and that's why every time there's inflammation, you tend to have um, that that pain that that comes with or that fluid leaking into the tissues and pressing against the nerve. And then the one sign where you know the inflammation is really bad, especially in your joints, you start losing mobility or the ability to to be functional at that site where you have been injured. So if it's a really bad bee sting or you're having a really bad reaction, you'll find that you, if you've been stung um, in the hand, you'll find that you have limited mobility um, in that hand until the inflammation starts dying down. So now you might ask, but why would my body use such a brutal way? It's almost like I'm burning parts of my house down to get rid of the stranger. And I'm sacrificing a bit of my couch and a bit of my my carpets and a bit of my furniture to get rid of the stranger in my house. Is it really worth it? Well, yes, it is worth it. Remember, the immune system's first response to invaders, inflammation is part of that, that process. We need a fast acting one size fits all approach while the, the uh, acquired immunity or the specialists um, are finding a way to effectively um, to deal with the situation if it's not resolving quickly. It contains the infection so that it does not spread. And the immune system also uses, or the body uses um, inflammation to um, heal, or actually not, not even to, to heal, to actually... Um, burn out the infected or damaged tissue and to also burn out whatever's causing that infection as well. So inflammation is a sign that your immune system is, is doing its job. Your immune system is working. So the good stuff about inflammation, it is beneficial when it's acute. Acute means we need that inflammation to happen for a short period especially when it, there's a specific um, trigger. So this, this response should not be happening for the sake of happening. It should be in response to something that is triggering it and something that is a danger to us. Acute inflammation, what's the time period? Well, it can last a few minutes. Um, it can last hours and it can last a couple of days, depending on the severity of the injury or the severity of um, the infection or um, how how bad um, the, the fight um, is, is your body's preparing for is going to be. So it depends on the extent of the injury, but really we do not want inflammation to be lasting more than a, a few days. Um, if it starts becoming prolonged, then we know that there is something wrong. And a well-controlled acute inflammatory response has protective roles. Remember I said it contains the inf infection. Infect infection. Um, it, it contains how much tissue is being damaged. It can remove the pathogen and the damaged tissue. And one of the big added benefit is that it helps us to repair um, our body a lot quicker. And the good news 2.0, so you get good news, you get good news, you get good news if you've ever experienced inflammation. Inflammation acts as a warning to the rest of our immune system that something is wrong. 
So it's a little alarm system that triggers. We need we need all hands on deck. Uh, we need to call all the immune systems to the site because we have something that's going on that does not look good. So remember, a few hours, a few days, perhaps even a few weeks, if it's a really ex extensive injury, but it should not last. Um, it should not be prolonged. It should not be something that you are experiencing on the regular. So generally, inflammation is normally good or beneficial. When does it start becoming bad? Inflammation starts becoming bad when it's long term or when it's inappropriate. So there is no danger, there is no infection, there is no pathogen, there is no injury. And the body is actually attacking itself. It's re the inflammation response is happening and it's the body's uh, it's reacting to the body's own tissue rather than a serious issue. And if that keeps on happening, it can result in diseases. Remember, anything that is chronic means that it has to be happening for three months. Um, um, it has to be happening for a period of three months without um, any break and longer than three months. So inflammation over the long term. Remember, we're setting fire to the pathogen, we're setting fire to some of the body's own tissue. If we keep on setting fire and we add petrol and we add coal um, and we add more um, catalysts that are fueling the fire, eventually the fire gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now instead of us having a little, um, a beautiful candlelight, uh, we end up having a big fire that we do not want. And it means that we're starting to damage the tissues that there's no action, the tissues that are perfectly fine. Um, and if we're starting to damage tissues, remember our tissues form part of our organs. It means that we're starting to affect other systems in the body and the body's ability to function. And that is how we can start triggering disease with that chronic inflammation. Your body will start falling apart. I want you to think of if you have chronic inflammation of your joints. Um, eventually, if you don't find a solution to that inflammation in your joints, um, you you will you will have arthritis, and arthritis over the long term it damages your joints irreparably, um, and that's one of the ways where chronic inflammation comes into play and triggers a disease. So what are the diseases that are associated with chronic inflammation? Heart health. If you are experiencing inflammation that seems to be happening in your arteries, sure, that is so bad because what ends up happening is that all that cholesterol might actually start sticking to your arteries and it creates a little plaque. Uh, think of wax. Um, think of wax um, or, or, or old fat. If you've cooked or you've roasted something and you leave the fat um, by the counter, it starts congealing and hardening. Um, think of that effect, the cholesterol starts hardening um, and then the space for the blood flow starts becoming less and less and less, putting strain on your heart and eventually we can cause blockage. So inflammation, especially in your arteries, can lead to heart failure, strokes and coronary heart disease. Inflammation, there may be links between chronic low inflammation that is constant and it's triggering mutations. It means your cells are changing and becoming damaged um, and becoming bad cells. Um, and, and if you don't get that um, inflammation um, in, in check, it means that the mutations become more aggressive. Diabetes, that's a big disease that is linked with chronic inflammation because inflammation interferes with that body's with our body's ability to make that to send that whatsapp text or to make that whatsapp call every time you drink something that has sugar or you eat something that has carbohydrates um it can't remain as sugar in your bloodstream we need it to go somewhere. We need it to go into the cells. 
So to get it into the cells, there's a whole process where we need to get that insulin um, released so that insulin can unlock the cells so that the glucose can go in and then it can get utilized for energy. If you keep on having inflammation, you start interfering with that telephone line that tells the body, oh, there's sugar or carbs or glucose in the bloodstream, and we need to get that, that sugar into the uh, cells. Um, and if that cell phone call is not being made or that WhatsApp text is not being made when you are consuming carbs or, or sugar, um, it means that we are increasing your risk of insulin resistance and you might become type 2 diabetic. Osteoporosis. If you keep on having inflammation, especially um, near your, your skeletal frame or your skeleton, it can speed up. So remember, our skeleton is constantly renewing itself. Every seven years, we get a brand new skeleton. Um, and the, the, the rate of which the bone is building and breaking itself down needs to be at a certain rate. If the bone is breaking down too quickly, then our bones start weakening um, and start becoming porous. So inflammation actually speeds up the rate at which we are um, resorbing or breaking down that, um, that bone. Um, and then you'll find that you're not regenerating that bone tissue enough. So inflammation can actually um, increase your risk of osteoporosis or just make it worse. Inflammation, especially if it's in the gut, sure it can have such a detrimental effect because it impairs our ability to absorb nutrients properly and to have proper gut health function and a big one inflammation especially if it's by the brain area so our brain is so um protected by the body there are very few things that are allowed to um, cross through the blood brain, blood brain, blood, sorry, it's been a long day, blood brain barrier. Um, your brain is, is, or your body is very strict about what do I allow inside the brain and what do I allow to come out of the brain. If you keep on having inflammation, especially inflammation that seems to find its way up into that region, it can start weakening your blood, bl blood ba brain barrier. <laughs> and that means all the molecules and toxins and um, some of the nutrients that we actually don't want up in the brain can start finding their way inside there. And that can trigger inflammation because now your body is saying danger, danger, danger. There's a stranger. In, the, in, in our head or in our skull, and we need to have a one-size-fits-all approach while we figure out what's going on. Um, and it can start leading to cognitive decline, especially in older adults, um, and it can actually start worsening any mood mental health disorders. So if you do suffer from depression, if you do suffer from anxiety, um, and if you keep on having inflammation in your gut or inflammation that's um, interfering with your blood brain barrier, it can worsen those symptoms. Um, and then let's just chat through. So this, this slide, we can go into details. We can even do like a follow up session to to go into these um, individually to to discuss how how um, inflammation works um, and and affects some of um, these systems or these organs um, and and worsen some of these conditions or the symptoms of these conditions. Remember, I mentioned that if you keep on having chronic inflammation in your blood vessels and it's contributing to heart disease. If you combine that inflammation in your blood vessels together with stress, so you're living a lifestyle where you are stressed and you are not finding ways to cope and deal with the stress, it can start leading to um, coronary um, artery disease. Um, it can start... Um, 
contributing to um, that um, blockage that I mentioned where that cholesterol is having a almost like a, 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 a chewing gum effect. Once you've chewed chewing chewing gum and it's still sticky especially if you 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 you're a more mature person and you you grew up um eating chappies especially the yellow one the yellow one used to be the stickiest one um it can have the effect inflammation can have the effect of trapping some of that cholesterol against your arteries and building up and that can cause that um, strain on your heart and lead to cardiovascular events. So stress, remember stress is your body's reaction when you are, there's a physical trigger. So you are thinking about um, the project that is due tomorrow, or you need to study, or you are thinking about, it's gosh, payday is taking too long to come. Um, and I'm down to my last 10 rand is, am I going to make it tomorrow? Um, so there are many things that can trigger stress and we can point them out. It can either be physical stress or it can be emotional stress. Your body helps you to cope with that stress. If there's a trigger, so something is making you stressed, your body needs to ring the alarm to say danger, danger, danger. So this happens, your brain picks up. In your hypothalamus, your brain picks up that there's, oh, there's danger. We either need to fight, we need to run away, we need to freeze, or we need to start complimenting and kissing butt and start fawning to try to protect us in this situation. So every time your body reads danger, 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 and remember, it doesn't matter how small or how big the stress trigger is. Whether it's you sitting in traffic and a taxi driver cuts through, rudely cuts through, and it elevates your blood pressure a little bit, and it, 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 it or, and, and you're stuck in traffic because you, you, I don't know, maybe it was poor um, um, time management, or it was life happens, and there's a combination of load shedding and a stationary vehicle and trucks that are burning, and now you're you're running late, you're running late, you're running late, or it could be something as severe as you are going through. Um, a grieving process, you've lost somebody you love, that's quite a big stress trigger. Your body can't tell the difference between big stress and small stress. All stress is stress and all stress is big. And your body will respond in the same way by producing cortisol. Cortisol has potent anti-inflammatory um, um, response. It is a hormone that helps us to reduce um, 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 inflammation. So short stress in, in, in bursts can be positive because it can help you to avoid that danger, to cope or to meet that deadline. It starts becoming a problem when you are constantly stressed and you're not giving your body a break. So almost every day over the long term, for a minimum of three to six months, you are constantly um in a stressful situation that keeps making your adrenal glands trigger that cortisol response. Long-term cortisol starts becoming pro-inflammatory and starts causing more um, inflammation. So chronic inflammation can be caused by, so what are some of the things I've mentioned? Stress. If you have excessive body fat, when the fat cells in the body are stuffed with, with excess fat, for some reason, not sure why, but the surrounding tissues start becoming inflamed. And that chronic low-level inflammation is one of the driving factors behind um, many of the diseases associated with obesity. So many of the diseases that we link with obesity, it might be because of that inflammation response that keeps happening, that slow burn. Grilling and frying and cooking at high temperatures can actually increase inflammation in the body, especially when you're deep frying in something. It releases mole molecules in the body that can damage the cells. Um, and when the cells get damaged, remember one of the ways we get rid of damaged cells is with inflammation. So if you keep on consuming things that are of deep fried and grilled at an exceptionally high, high heat, you can be increasing that inflammation response in the body. Sugar. Sugar 
stimulates the production of what we call harmful free radical or, or the production of fatty acids in the liver. Sorry. So when your body, when your liver is creating some of these fatty acids, the resulting compounds can trigger the inflammatory processes. And then remember I told you, if we keep on overloading our body with processed and refined carbohydrates, it puts our, our pancreas under strain to keep up with producing all that const constant insulin response. And sugar, when it's unregulated um, and uncontrolled, can actually start damaging the body, especially your nerves. And how does the body re repair itself? It repairs itself with inflammation. So we almost create like a little cycle. Remember I mentioned if you're frying and grilling with excessive, um, at excessive heat, also with excessive omega-3s, I mean omega-9s, um, oh, goodness, sorry, it's been a very long day. Excessive omega-6, um, these are your uh, unsaturated fats. It can have a pro-inflammation effect. And to balance that, that effect, you might need to uh, make sure you're getting enough omega-6. Omega-3, sorry. Alcohol, that's another one. So alcohol, so re research is showing that alcohol causes inflammation in your intestines. If you keep on causing inflammation in your intestines, it means that we are interfering with the body's ability to absorb nutrients properly. Um, and then somehow, if that intestine is not intact, if it keeps on fighting off inflammation, it does interfere with the body's ability to regulate that inflammation because it means that, remember, in our gut, we want to also control what is going in and what is going out. We want to keep some of that harmful substances from being absorbed into the bloodstream. If we start weakening that, that lining, that um, intestine lining, it means that now molecules that don't belong in the bloodstream keep filtering and finding their way in. And how does our body react or deal with strangers in the bloodstream or in other parts of the body? It responds with inflammation. Another one is high intensity training, and I'm going to cover that in the next slide as well. But remember, when we are working out, we need to damage our muscles so that our bodies can repair them and our muscles grow back stronger. And how does the body repair itself? Inflammation. So inflammation comes into play in that repair, or repair process or the maintenance process um, so that when the body increases blood flow, to that affected site. It's a way of the body imp improving oxygen supply and fueling the muscles and clearing out the waste. And then oxidative stress and stress, oxidative stress is when your body is under strain or being exposed to molecules that are damaging healthy cells and we need to um, limit that damage. It's a, it's a sign for your immune system to start um, kicking into action. And Cortisol is one of, is actually the only hormone that increases as you age. And if you are not having healthy cortisol levels as you age, you might be increasing your inflammation as you age. So the link between inflammation and exercise, exercise is good. Uh, we want that good kind of sore. We want that um, our triceps to ache because we did those few extra sets and we pushed a little bit harder and we want our glutes to burn from running up those hills. It is a signal to our brain that our muscles need to get into repair mode after a good workout. So that's good. That's what we want. And remember, how does um, exercise help us to reduce inflammation? If we can get that excess fat under control, because if it's too much fat um, um, in the body, that it, it tells the body to create an, uh, a little bit of an inflammation response. Not sure why, but that's just what happens. So if you can get your, your, your um, fat to 
muscle ratio under control and be a little bit leaner and in better shape, it goes a long way in reducing that inflammation. When you start experiencing soreness and sharp pains, especially in your joints, like your knees and your wrists and your ankles, it could be a sign of unwanted inflammation. So when does inflammation become bad after a workout? It means that you might be pushing too hard. It means that you, especially when you're doing exercises like your, your high intensity interval training and CrossFit and powerlifting and long distance um, um, endurance activity like your cycling and your running, those are good for your body. If you overdo it, um, remember when you do it, your muscles are tearing, you're having micro tears. Um, and then your body needs to repair that with inflammation. So if you overdo it, it can cause your inflammation levels to spike because now we need to spend a little bit more, send a little bit more fire to all the muscle um, um, sites to, to do a lot of repairing. And if you're not recovering um, and, and letting your, your, your body heal before you wiggle the next exercise session, then you end up doing more harm then good. So inflammation is a good way to battle that inflammation, but it can also be uh, one of the triggers of you having constant inflammation. And remember, if you keep on having too much inflammation, then your body struggles to regulate that response and you start damaging the tissue that don't need repair and it takes you longer to heal. So diet, tree, and lifestyle changes are a big must if you are somebody that's suffering from inflammation, especially chronic inflammation. You need to have a, a low glycemic um, diet, rich in fiber, especially your dietary soluble and insoluble fiber. So fi fiber from your grains and fibers from your um, fruits and veggies. And we are looking at 24 grams a day. Um, that can lower the levels of your inflammatory cytokines. You need to monitor your cholesterol. Increased exercise if you are somebody that has a, a very relaxed lifestyle. Um, it can help with um, lowering some of the cytokine um, effects. And if you can get leaner um, into better shape, then um, you have that added benefit. And nature is always on speed dial. Our pharmacy is in nature. There are many herbal um, um, and, and, and nutrients from nature that have strong anti-inflammatory properties to help relieve some of the symptoms without producing some of the side effects that are associated with conventional painkillers. If you are managing your inflammation and your pain over the long term, with your NSAIDs or your, your painkillers, you are, I know you have to take them because you are in agony and it's giving you relief, but they, so one of the side effects that come from using um, painkillers over the long term is that it can destroy your gut lining. And once that gut lining is destroyed, there is no fixing it. So, Nutraceuticals, nutra means nut nut nutrient, and suitical means the pharmaceutical benefits that we are getting from natural nutrients. They can relieve that inflammation. But let's be real, they're not as potent as the pharmaceutical medication, um, especially if you're suffering from acute um, inflammation and severe pain. So it's not quick acting. They do take longer to take effect, but if you can be patient, they can be better at addressing the underlying cause behind the pain. It means that they can have the ability of helping to teach your body how to manage that inflammation response a lot more effectively. So the biggest, biggest, biggest nutrient that you should be making sure that you're getting enough of, especially if you are somebody who exercises and um, is, is quite active, you always need to make sure that you're getting enough omega-3 from your fish, 
or your krill oil. And if you're vegan or vegetarian, you can get your omega-3 from your flaxseed. They contain your EPA and DHA, and they have a way of blocking. They tell your body, nope, we don't need fire. Bring it down. Switch it off. Um, especially if you are in a lot of pain. I used to have a tonsillitis attack every two weeks. Every two weeks, I'd, 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 I'd have a tonsillitis attack. Um, and remember, your tonsils form part of your immune system. So it means that my immune system was just seeing danger, 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 every, especially when I was stressed. Um, when I was stressed, I'd get a tonsillitis attack. After I've started making sure that I am getting enough omegas, I maybe have a tonsillitis attack once or twice a year. But overall, for the last three or four years, it seems like maybe I was consuming a lot more omega. Well, I was a lot more omega-6 from our sunflower oils and, and all the, the good stuff. And I was not consuming enough of that. And you want small fish. The smaller the fish, the better. And that fish needs to come from cold waters. So that hake might be lovely, but it has very low omega-3 content. You want the salmons, you want that pulchards, you want the sardines. Those are rich in omega-3 oils. If you are cooking, you love cooking, make sure that you're hoying in some turmeric. Turmeric is that lovely spice that turns everything yellow, including your, your um, kitchen cloth and everything that you touch. But turmeric does have the property of being an anti-inflammatory and for pain relief. So inside that turmeric is the curcumin that helps to block that inflammatory protein, so your cytokine, and enhances the, uh, the body's ability to decrease inflammation. So cook with that turmeric, or you can take it in a supplement form. Bromelain, this is an enzyme that comes from pineapple, and we're finding that it can help to reduce inflammation. The components in hot chili peppers, also known as cayenne, can also be known to temporarily um, reduce inflammation and pain. Essential oils. So if you keep having inflammation of the muscles and your joints, then maybe have a look at something that contains the essential oils, especially your arnica, your silver birch, your rosemary, la lavender a little bit, your orange peel is a good one, and your calendula oil. Those are very good in relieving um, inflammation and pain in your joints and in your muscles. But the key thing is I want you to start digging deep. If you keep on having chronic inflammation, it's your body's way to say there is something wrong. We are having an excessive immune response to everything. Um, or we are having an, an, an excessive immune response to might be something that you might be doing. It might be a condition that is lurking under that you're not picking up, but inflammation that doesn't go away is not normal. And once you've figured out what the problem is, you need to exercise patience. So put in the work, make the lifestyle changes that are necessary. But if you're going to be using natural medication and nutrients and supplements, to try help you fight that inflammation. It is not going to be a quick fix. It's not gonna give you the relief of ibuprofen, but if you stick with it, a minimum of three to six months, you should start noticing some sort of, of difference, especially when you, 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 you find um, the nutrient or your fighter that works for you and helping you to regulate your inflammation response. So that brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions that um, Sanali has picked up from the Q&A box. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to type them or to unmute yourself and to, to, to ask me. We do have two minutes left, but I thank you very much for joining. I hope you do learn, you did learn something um, and that it was worth your while to, to join us for this hour, especially in the evening where I know a lot of you have a lot of things going on. Thank you, Thank Sanali. You, Are there any Thanks questions? Thanks, everyone. Um, please keep your screen on the question slide. I'll just quickly hand over to Tash and then I'll address, I'll ask you the questions and you can just answer some for everyone. 
Okay. Wow, thank you so much. That was so interesting. Um, we really appreciate it. I know I learned a lot and I hope um, you guys did too. I'm just popping in here to remind you um, to be eligible for the prizes that um, we have this afternoon. Um, you need to please put your name and your surname and your email address into the comment section. Um, they're not going to be published. They're not going to be um, used anyway. It's just going to be for us to cross reference when we do the draw. So um, please um, put in your name and your email address into the comment section. We'll download it and then we'll draw the winners of our two amazing prizes um, tomorrow and let you know. So now we can go through some questions. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining us. I really had fun and I hope you guys had too. Great. Thank you so much. I have over 160 comments Ooh. but i'll quickly <laughs> just scan up to touch through one or two of the basics okay i'm looking at joy joy is saying if the gastrointestinal lining has already been damaged by the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical medication will natural medication still be effective so to prevent further damage um, to your gut lining a good nutrient is curcumin so make sure that you're getting curcumin. Curcumin has a way of protecting your stomach lining um, um, or, or the um, pain medication, the, the, the NSAID from coming into contact with your gut lining. And then maybe look at a supplement like glutamine. Glutamine can help with recovery, but it can also help with um, keeping your gut lining in intact. So curcumin and glutamine, that's a nice combination. Great. I have a question here for adaptive immunity. Is it right to say that we must be exposed to danger in order to fight the danger? Yes, we do. So that's where the concept of um, getting a vaccine comes from. We need to give you the mild and weakened version of that danger and your body gets time to, to figure out what it is and develops antibodies so that it, it is able to. The next time you come into contact with that, you should be able to fight more effectively unless it is a virus that tends to mutate too quickly for your body to keep its information up to date. So the strategy needs to keep improving, but you do need to ex be exposed to the danger sometimes to, 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 to strengthen that adaptive immunity. What happens if the inflammation does not settle? We have a big problem, then I do recommend that you actually go to a specialist who it's not going to be um, a cheap exercise. It can be a little bit costly, but somebody who is willing to take the time to do a full body analysis and help you to dig deep. So something like the compounding pharmacy, they can if they can identify where do we need to fine tune and focus the tests on and let's just see how we can have a more holistic approach to dealing with that inflammation. Um, but you need to see a specialist that inflammation cannot continue um, unregulated and unchecked. You, 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 you cannot live with inflammation. Um, it's, you, you need to, 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 to seek um, intervention. If it means that you might need to spend a little bit more money getting that consult that is going to be extensive, eventually you come with a solution, but it costs you a lot more. It's going to be more expensive for you to leave that that inflammation unregulated than for you to actually get a consult where you can figure out what is triggering it. There is something triggering it. Is it true that inflammation from exercise can increase your weight on the scale? Inflammation from exercise? Um, I'm actually not sure. I'm just trying to have a think why that would be. If my brain is connecting the dots. Remember, maybe if you are getting, if you are exercising, you are building muscle. And, and remember, every time we build muscle, we need that inflammation to repair the muscle. And remember, the more muscle you build, you might look leaner and, and, and have a, a trimmer frame, but you can um, weigh a little bit heavier. Right. 
We do have a few questions on arthritis joints and pains, but one question is, is arthritis essentially severe inflammation or a completely different condition or are they linked? It's, it's, it's inflammation that's targeting your joints. So it's it's inflammation that just seems to target your joints. It's inflammation. It's not a different type of inflammation. Should you try and stop inflammation as soon as possible, or is it a way your body um, needs to heal itself? It's a way the, your body needs to heal itself. And inflammation is it's going to be painful. It's going to be uncomfortable. Um, if it's not alleviating after, if, if it's, if it's, if, if you're waking up, the inflammation is there, but it shouldn't be as bad as yesterday. It shouldn't be getting worse and worse and worse. It should start becoming more um, easier to live with um, and, and give it seven days. If it's not um, alleviating after seven days, then maybe 